So about 12 years ago, I got a chance to buy this little LH25 Kubota. It's a 23 horse tractor, I think. That detail is not important to me because what's important to me is being able to use a tool and get work done. And in that department, I don't think I've ever bought anything that's been more versatile and all around useful and frankly productive than this little farm tractor platform. It doesn't have a hydrostatic transmission. That means it's slower. That means it's tougher. It has implements for the back. It has implements for the front. I've made forks for the front. And now that I'm 64 years old, I realize that the decision to get this little tractor was probably the single decision I made that's going to keep me productive longer than anything else. Now, one of, one of the quirks of my personality is that I just, I neglect maintenance. And I've neglected this little guy, not terribly, not criminally, but it's time to lay a little love on this guy because he has a little more work to do before spring gets here and it's time for things to happen with a tractor that has to be ready to go. So, it's time to pay back just a little bit of what I owe to this little Kubota. Well, I've been fiddling around here for a couple hours this afternoon, putting that grill on. The old one was broken and uh, just done. So anyhow, I've got that little puzzle solved. And now I've got to put a couple of hydraulic hoses on that I've had for a year laying around. I didn't get them put on before, but I'm going to get them put on tonight because tomorrow we're out in the field digging some ditches, I hope. Over the last 10 years or so, I've replaced most, if not all, of the original hydraulic hoses on this thing. And it didn't take me long to figure out that by far, by far, the most cost-effective solution is to take the old hose to a shop and have the new hose made up to match. It's way less money and it's much much faster than going to the dealer, going through their catalog, ordering the replacement hoses and then waiting impatiently for them to show up. Well it amazed me but I had limited success last night putting the new grill in uh, my tractor. The headlights work but I can't make the emergency flashers work so in some way the wiring harness, electrical connections either got disconnected or there's some sort of a glitch, which I have to be honest and say, I knew that would happen because electrical and I um, have deep issues. But it's in and it works and we've made some progress. We've got hydraulic hoses on now. And so I have more confidence in the front end of my tractor. I mean, when hoses, hoses get old and they blow, you have catastrophic failure, and when they leak, you uh, have to buy hydraulic fluid. So the last phase of what I'm doing for the tractor itself is to grease the fittings. It's time for a confession. I hate grease. I hate grease. And I hate grease guns. And so my equipment languishes, and I have more wear than I should have. So understanding all that and having girded up my loins and decided that I just have to do it, I'm going to grease all the fittings that I can find, that I'm aware of, and once I get the tractor lubed up, I'm going to hook the backhoe attachment on, bring it in, put a new seat on it, grease that thing up, and be ready to get to work. Well, I think that this thing is ready to pump grease now. It's always a question. I packed the head of it full. Hopefully there's no air pockets in there. Let's see. How many times I have to squeeze this to make any grease come out? Oh, look at that. We have a qualified success. I don't know if that's ever happened to me with a new grease gun. Yay, we have grease. Exciting. Now in my defense, I think that one reason that I hate grease so much is that I'm a carpenter first. And as a carpenter, the smallest bit of grease that gets loose on a job soon, and I mean soon, is going to spread around everywhere. It's going to be on tools, on the lumber, on the drywall, on the carpet, not to mention on your clothes and probably on the inside of your truck. And besides that, I've only had this thing long enough to put about 600 hours on it. Now that's not much in 12 years, and so even my utterly irresponsible level of maintenance and greasing in particular is not that big a deal. Now just a 
note, and an important note about hooking up implements like this, any time you're working close to a rotating shaft or operating hydraulics out of position, I mean not sitting in the seat, you're taking your life in your hands. So pay attention. So this is a real awkward and frustrating process, but I've learned that I can put the bucket on the ground and then tilt the bucket to work the tractor back and forth little bits at a time. We're getting close. I've got three points that need to line up about right and we're within, oh, about an inch and a quarter of having it. Let's see how it goes. There's two. This little tractor is a handy machine, but the attachment between this little backhoe and the back of the tractor is the weak point. It's weak, it's slow, it's uncertain, and one of the places that this is certainly going to fail is right here with these pins. Another place is right there where it transfers from the spline coming out of the back of the PTO into this pump. There's a little half moon keyway in there that's always breaking and wearing off and having to be fixed but you know what all in all pretty handy tool and I am very very thankful to have it as you can see this seat is all done it was on here when I got it I've ordered one from Kubota I hope it fits we'll see how we did Of the five or six detachable implements that I've got for this thing, and not counting the front end loader itself, this backhoe is the one that I use the most and respect the least. And first let me give you the downsides. It's high maintenance. Leaks are everywhere and they're constant. It's really painful to hook up. It's sloppy. The swing is so sloppy, you're lucky to get it anywhere close to where you want it when you're putting it on the ground the first time. And somehow, it's both underpowered and slow. But, having said all that, brother, when you need it, it is way better than a pick and a shovel. And it has saved me a lot of money over the years. In fact, probably more money than all the rest of the implements combined. And if you take your time, if you don't you know, get a late start, and if you don't schedule an appointment too closely to when you actually start digging, you're going to end up getting a lot of work done with it by the time the sun goes down. In my mind, there's no question that the MVP award when it comes to implements for a tractor just has to be the front end loader. It changes a tractor completely, from something that only pulls to something that pulls and lifts and pushes and digs and carries. And so, never buy a tractor without a loader on it. But you got to be careful, because loaders are just as risky as they are useful. It's that whole risk and reward thing, right? It's everywhere, all the time, and we've got to learn to keep track of it. This rototiller is a lifesaver exactly two days a year. But that's not always the best way to think about its value, for me. Because the real value here is that the joy of gardening would not be part of my family's life without it. And that adds up to a lot more than just two days a year. This mower deck that I'm pulling around behind the tractor is right in between the backhoe and the rototiller for general usefulness. In the springtime, I just couldn't keep ahead of the grass without this thing. And in the fall, I use it to mulch up the organic material that I try to compost and that comes out of the garden and that needs to be chopped up. 
I almost hate to even show you this last implement that I've got that attaches to the three-point hitch. It's this post hole digger. It's an auger. And I salvaged it out of a junk pile years ago, and brother, it shows. It's a man killer. It's weak, it's jerky, but just like the backhoe, it is 100% better than nothing at all. And once the post holes are dug and the posts are in place, I usually forget all about what a pain this thing is to operate. So as we get ready to wrap this video up, I've just got to point out that having a loader without a set of forks to go with it is leaving money on the table. Forks add capacity and convenience that I just can't do without as an old man. I've got to say, in spite of my neglect and the occasional abuse that the jobs I take on sort of require, this little thing has always impressed me because whatever it lacks in size, whatever it lacks in weight, it more than makes up for with toughness and reliability. Thank you for watching Essential Craftsman, and keep up the good work.